this thing. Sometimes NASA comes up with the creepiest stuff. We're going to talk about the articulated dummy today on Vintage Space. Properly called the Power Driven Articulated Dummy, this has to be one of the weirdest little fringe projects NASA ever took on and then ultimately abandoned in the 1960s. So back in the early and mid-1960s, when NASA was starting to look at more intensive spacesuits that could handle spacewalks and EVAs on the moon, it started looking at ways to test out these spacesuits without having to use astronauts or people inside the suit to see how they worked. The problem was that depending on how stiff or easy a suit was to move, the person being tested inside the suit could actually get pretty hurt. If the joints didn't move all the way or move too much or didn't move back into a position, you could seriously dislocate, say, a shoulder, and NASA didn't want to do that to one of its astronauts or any engineer who volunteered to test out the suit. So NASA came up with the idea of using a humanoid dummy instead of a human. In a response to a NASA proposal, the Illinois Institute of Technology ran a program from May of 1963 to July of 1965 to develop this power-driven articulated dummy with the idea of testing spacesuits. So here's basically how it worked. The dummy was made to move and look like a human so it could wear a suit and test the stresses involved in different types of spacesuit designs. That is, how much force and torque power was needed on a joint to move, say, the arm from a straight to a bent position or to move the shoulder joint. Now, humans aren't super basic. We have different types of joints. They're not all just hinge joints. We've got ball and socket joints and joints with bones over top. So the team at IIT couldn't completely replicate a human skeleton. Instead, it developed a dummy that could move through 35 of the most common human movements using very simple motors to move joints. The dummy was made of electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical components and described as a remotely controlled articulating force gauge configured and sized for a human. Every time it moved, a rotary hydraulic actuator would provide the power for the motion. That output torque was then transmitted to an adjoining member through a cantilevered beam, to which strain gauges were bonded. As the beam moved under a load, it generated an electrical signal that was then sent to a strain gauge. When that strain gauge was calibrated against known torque levels, it gave engineers a readout of the torque involved in every movement. They could then use this information to understand how hard it would be for an astronaut to move within the spacesuit. Futuristic as this dummy may have looked, it could not move alone. It had to be controlled by an operator at a control station. And because of the limitations of that operator and that control station, only four joints could move at the same time. It was also up to that controller to make sure that he did not get the dummy stuck. It was possible if he moved, say, the shoulder and the neck at the wrong point at the wrong time, he could have gotten the two stuck together somehow. So a lot of it really fell to the operator's fine control of the dummy. And the dummy looks so creepy because all of its electrical components, shaped roughly into a man, are covered with quote unquote skin, which is really 1 32nd inch thick aluminum supported by ribs and formers. The rigid section is cut away from the joint so they could move better. On top of that was a layer of quote unquote skin. It was a 1 8 inch thick neoprene foam cut into pants, a jacket, and booties to give it some kind of more rigid form. The head was made of fiberglass with reinforced polystyrene, with the eye section removable for easy access to all the mechanics inside the head space. And if all that weren't creepy enough, the dummy was also designed to grow. It could be a 5 foot 5 inch male, or it could be a 6 foot 2 inch male. The idea being it could replicate a man from the 5th percentile to the 95th percentile, giving NASA a whole swath of the population to put into its spacesuits. Unfortunately, the dummy didn't work. The hydraulic system just couldn't generate enough force to actually move all the limbs without leaking, so the project was eventually abandoned. And NASA used humans to test its spacesuits. And considering people walked on the moon in said spacesuits, I think NASA did okay. I just love the weird ingenuity of the early space age to solve problems when they couldn't do things like model on computers, don't you guys? Let me know what some of your favorite little known test programs are in the comments below. And of course, if you have other questions about anything spacey. And there's more to be said about this dummy, including tech specs, so if you want to know more about the power-driven articulated dummy from the 1960s, be sure to check out my related blog post over at PopSci, the link is in the description below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily Vintage Space content, and with new videos going up every week, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.